Mars is one of our two neighboring planets and it's the nature of mankind to look in its neighborhood and this is also applies for the cosmic neighborhood. Ever since people looked in the night sky, they realized that Mars is different than all the other planets. It's red and uh, red is the color of blood and so it was no wonder that uh, the Greeks and the Romans, they thought this is the place of war. So they gave Mars the name of their war gods, Ares and then Mars. And then the telescope observations showed us a changing planet. This is due to the atmosphere and the weather there, but they thought these are forests that are growing and there are rainforests and all these things. And only until we reached Mars with spacecraft, they realized that it's a different world from Earth. It's really a very dry desert planet. Well, the early years of Mars exploration, these have been pioneering years. A lot went wrong because these have been very young systems, so to say, in space flight was just not even 10 years old. The big breakthrough was then in the early 70s when NASA sent some Mariner spacecraft to Mars which sent us the first 22 images from Mars back and since then we know a little bit more about Mars and then of course Viking came in 1976-77 to see how Mars really looked like. In the 90s there were some tragic failures too, but finally there came the big, big missions with the landing uh, probes that had rovers on board like Spirit, Opportunity, now Curiosity. And of course there's Mars Express. In more than 10 years the first European orbiter on another planet is exploring Mars and this is of course a great thing. The orbital parameters of Mars allow it only every two years to fly to the planet. You have to focus all your preparations to, to start in this launch window, as we call it. Then you have to accelerate your spacecraft to reach Mars, which then, when you reach it, is about 100 or more million kilometers away. So you have the next problem with the communication, because every signal you send to the spacecraft and it is returned from the spacecraft takes 10 minutes, maybe. So you don't have direct influence in what's going on there. You have, to all, you have all to program it in the spacecraft. And when you want to land on Mars, it's even more difficult because you have to fly with very high speed through an atmosphere which you don't know precisely how it reacts because it has day and night cycles, it has seasonal changes in this atmosphere. This makes Mars really a difficult target. Well, in the near future, we hope, of course, that Curiosity will return a lot of interesting data from Mars until the early 20s. But the next projects, of course, are yet in the pipeline. And one of these projects is a NASA mission called InSight. The name is part of the program because we want to look inside Mars and uh, therefore we developed a drilling device, a mole so to say, that can dig into the Martian surface about five meters deep. This has been developed here at DLR and will be launched in a few years to Mars. And the next step will be with an European orbiter to look for trace gases in the atmosphere of Mars and then land on Mars with a European mobile rover to look on the Martian surface on other places where other landers have been so we want to go with a laboratory on Mars like the Americans did. But the big project of course all scientists dream about is uh, that we want to return samples from Mars and when we have samples here on Earth in our laboratories we can maybe answer the question whether there has ever been life on Mars, whether there is still today life on Mars or if there is no life on Mars.